NZXT Cam. Monitor your games while playing. To learn more about it, check out the description. Hey everybody, it is the Angry Honey Badger here, and it is of course time for Patch Notes 6.7. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do this live because my internet has been crap recently. One of the reasons, just, just one of the reasons why I haven't been streaming a ton uh, recently too. I've just been having tons of internet issues. Thank yeah, Kyle, shut up. Kyle. Okay. Come on, Kyle. Come on, Kyle. Come on. Um, obviously, joining me is some bastard named Kyle. Um, hey, all I'm saying is, you work at a place that has a BA internet. All you can do is stream for a couple hours after work and then go home. Except for people are still there working, and it's kind of like a nuisance. <laughs> what? Who's working at 5 o'clock? Come Dude, on. Dude, like, people stay in the office till like 7 or 8, so. Yeah, I wonder why, because they're streaming your guys' bomb they're ass not internet. They're streaming on the bomb ass internet. Anyways, that's what's up. So we're going to go over the patch. It'll just be uploaded like normal. So nobody's watching this live, so we don't get to joke with anybody, unfortunately. Um, to kick things off, though, we're going to start off by taking a look at Aurelian Soul, who will be getting a nerf. I'm going to be completely honest. I still haven't played. I have to be completely honest. He's not no longer Aurelian Soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, no. What, no. What are you talking about? What? He's no. He's no longer. Sw oh, okay. Never oh, mind. Yeah, okay. I, I actually think that he's kind of Magoo. Like he's yeah. one of those players, like, those champions that you have to get really good with him. And frankly, he just hasn't been out long enough to be really good with him. Yeah. Um, I think he's pretty good in the jungle. I don't like him in lanes at all, uh, just because of you're constantly either a pushing your lane or b you're using mana to farm, um, which is not very good. Uh, so, I don't know. He's kind of Magoo to me, but mm -hmm. we'll see when people get a couple more weeks under their belt. Well, so far they're nerfing him, so stun duration on Star Surge going down, and Voice of Light uh, slow going down, duration of it going down. So, no longer decays over the duration. They remove the stay a while. So, just Even. nerfs. Maybe he is too strong. I've seen a couple okay ones. I've seen a couple not great ones. Um, his stickiness was definitely apparent, especially if you got Rileys right away. Like, people could never get away. So I can see how they would yeah. nerf this. But, um, yeah, I, he doesn't interest me as a champion right now. Like, that's why I haven't jumped onto playing him. Also, I'm currently working on other champions to make builds for him. So we should have good build stuff in the coming weeks. So people should be happy about that. So I think that <laughs> I think that all the, like, the really good players that can sh really show what he does... It's yeah. always banned anytime I watch any like high elo stream, so it's like really hard for me to gauge because I haven't seen one of the like you know the higher end players play him. Yeah. But so it's kind of I, I would guess that these nerfs are warranted, but once again, it's just that that unknown factor of not having played him enough. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Next up, we have Corky on his Hextech mutations on this passive, the ratio on basic attacks instead of being 1.1 total attack damage, it's just going back down to one. Um, another small nerf, Corky's still one of the best just champions in the game right now, no arguments there. Um, should this affect him? Obviously a little bit, but as long as, honestly, as long as Corky has his kit and his build path the way it is, I think Corky will always be a good champion. He always has been a good champion. He's never been like, oh, Corky's just bad right now. Like that, no, he's either been pretty middle tier to upper tier when it comes to just him as a champion. So Corky's just got a good kit, so. I don't think that Corky, like you said, ever changes that much in terms of power. It's just that like you look for different things from your AD carry slot and with different rises and different falls in the meta, he can be played mid now, which like obviously helps. It's because he's hybrid. Because, it's his damage. Well, yeah, because the, 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 the professional players like the fact that they can flex him from mid to AD carry, and you don't really like reveal anything by picking him first. Um, but And the package he's a little bit helps too him strong. roam, too. Yeah. So. yeah. He's a little bit too strong, but I don't think he's like, he's not like, you know, season three cast it in or something. No, shit. no. He's and when you say too strong, he's too strong if somebody plays him perfectly. Because once again everything he does is a skill shot. I mean he can miss. Yeah. He can miss everything and, and then Corky's worthless, but next up we have Aurelia. One of the few champions actually getting a buff on this patch. Um, probably surprises some people. Also, the better nerf Aurelia saying honestly needs to almost die at this point. She's gotten two buffs back to back and before that she'd only ever gotten two nerfs. So Aurelia Wait total? Yeah, somebody they went back and checked this. Like that's like that's better nerf Aurelia is one of the worst like things ever for people to say. Like it's the one of the most inaccurate like things ever. Like it'd be more accurate know. to say that's like ridiculous. There's no way that's true. Yeah, I, we looked it up once. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 
I mean, there might be minor all, tweaks, but like nerfs and buffs, patches. yeah, not a lot. You moved your mic, by the way. Um, Sorry. You're fine. Um, Blade Surge is going to get a mana reduction. A reduction. Nice. It's like dunking, but duction. Um, 10 mana off at each of its ranks. And then the ability, or the attack damage ratio on it is going to go up from 1 to 1.2. Um, I think we might start to see her back in top a little bit more often. I... I I really mains or people who really like to play her really get mad at the tier list when they see that she's in B. I think she's in B. It's because she hasn't been like top tier. B's not a bad place to be in the in the tier list, but this might move her up actually to A finally because like she didn't she didn't deserve an A because oh I'm awesome with Aurelia. Like no, she she was she just wasn't the best for a long time and it shows. Like she hardly gets played because she really needed just some tweaking for her to come up to that next level. And she's getting it finally, so um how does your tier list go? Is it S A B? S A B. Okay, and then everything else. C. Uh, F. I don't know. I think B is. I think B is still probably good. She probably is like high B, low A for yeah, me yeah. because she doesn't fit the current meta right now. Just because, like, if you can't take, she can obviously take corrupting potion top lane. But if she can't, but like the really really good champions in top lane right now are like Echo, Maokai, like the the Cinder Hall, or like the the. The Bomby Cinder, the uh, the Frozen Gauntlet, Iceborne Gauntlet, like yep. those champions excel really well in the top lane right now. And unfortunately, if you're building those two, you're probably finding be like falling behind because of just base stats. Yeah. So, like good solo queue champion um, can carry games, can destroy the lane, um, but you're still probably maxing this last. Yeah. Like most people max W and then Eve second. So. Yeah. Still yeah. probably maxing it last, but it's a big change. Like I mean, at max rank, you're gonna be you get 35 mana back if you kill the target. So, it's like, true. that's a good point. You know, that's that's 15 mana per blade surge if you kill the target. Like that's nothing. Yeah, that's true. Anything so, that. next up is Jin. Jin's getting nerfed and buffed. A little bit of both, mostly a nerf though. Um, they are going to be changing his dancing grenade. The damage on that is being reduced by 10 at each rank. The cost of it as well is going up by 10. Um, this is base damage. I'm not too worried about this, but yes, it's a little bit of a nerf. It does take a little bit of power out of him. And then um, Captive Audience actually costs 10 less mana. So a small change there to kind of make up for the mana cost on Q, but obviously you use your Q more often, so that'll be more impactful on the mana cost issues. Um, but overall, uh, nothing else about him has really changed. Um, if he's still building the same, or at least use my build, I think it's quite strong. I don't think you have to worry about that. I think he's still quite good. Um, I don't know how much this will change him in my list. Might move him. Actually, I wanted to put him in S, but I didn't, so maybe he'll stay about the same. So we'll see. I, he's he's got to be high A, low S mm -hmm. uh, for me, just because like this hurts. A. Yeah, this hurts, but like I don't think that Riot thought that people were gonna build Essence Reaver right away on him, and so like when you get that mana back from the crit, like. They don't like think through things so much, and you could basically just constantly spam Q uh, when it was up when you got when you got Essence Reaver. So I like this change; um, it'll slow him down a little bit. But honestly, you're not gonna be in range to Q a whole bunch when you're in team fights. Like when you were really like when you were playing Jin well when no one else was it was because you were always so far back and you'd basically use your W and like you would have ease up already you use your W and then you would basically pick people off with your humongous damage ulti and like none of that's changed so I, I still think he's gonna be about the same yeah I think it'll be about the same overall. like I said these are these are changes but I don't think they're gonna kill him also if yeah. you get the Essence Reaver, and you get your mana back. That that those mana changes don't really matter. So, yeah, exactly. But damage off is just less poke, and I think this is a little bit more focused towards the solo lane in some ways because I think it's more impactful there than in the duo lane, in my opinion. So, but still, well, and still and change like ten damage is almost like ten, ten damage is ten yeah. damage, but it's almost nothing. Yeah, I agree. Like I agree. Uh, next up is Kindred. I actually really like these changes. God. Really like these changes. Kindred's been one of the strongest junglers for a while now. Um, whether or not you're good with her at that is a completely different story. 
But on Wolf's Frenzy, the passive heal is going to be reduced by 9 at rank 1, but it will scale slightly higher. So earlier on, it's going to be slightly less, and then it'll reach a point where it's better than it was. So it's going to scale better throughout the game. And then the more exciting change to me is Lamb's Respite, where on the ultimate now, it self-casts directly on top of Kindred. You can't place it on your allies. So your allies need to be on you or you need to be on them for them to be within that circle. It'll make it a lot harder to save somebody who's slightly on the edge of the fight or like you're coming into the fight to save someone. If they're out of range of that circle on your cast spot, they won't be in it and they might just die right away if they can't get into it. So this is going to make saving people more difficult. And they do like how, like I think the thing they mentioned is they like complexity in the game. There's a value to that. But experienced players are too, able to optimize this too well. So they're going to remove that aspect of being able to put it somewhere and putting it on her, which I'm actually really okay with. It should simplify it in a lot of ways and it should make the uh, predictability higher. Um, not that it needs to be much higher than what it is, but I, I like this change. It should nerf some power out of team fights for that team. Yeah, to me the big change is the passive heal at the early levels because you're not going to be able to clear as efficiently as you were before. Um, but obviously, you know, at what, level 9, that That's could sweet. probably be about the same. Yeah. So... I mean, it's not going to be that much noticeable. Once she's still going to be really three. good. Yeah. Yeah, she'll still be fine. Um, Expe especially in, like, high elos. It's because her, like, her, her damage is still going to scale. They have good positioning. Yeah. And yeah. plus, her like, like during when team fights are organized, that's not, like, I don't think that the R is really going to change anything. Yeah. Um, but if it's, like, a chaotic, like, you know, getting picked off fight, then, yeah, it's going to be a big deal. It'd so, be harder to save somebody unless yeah, you're there. Yeah, exactly. It'll make Kindred's position more difficult, too, if they have to be somewhere else to use it. Wait, why is this Lysandra change? Here? They just wanted to tell us that her hair now moves realistically to her base in all skins. Gotcha. Weird. Yep. All right, cool. Um, Lux is next. Prismatic Barrier is slightly slower as it goes out, but is much faster on return. Overall faster from 6.6, .6, that is, because that's when the change initially came in. But they're going to touch that up so um i'm gonna go with neat cool yep um next up is nidalee now nidalee has seen some nerfs and she's gonna be getting another one but this is like a nerf buff they're gonna just take five more damage off of pounce in the early game but they're gonna give her 10 more in the late game it'll switch over like almost right away because it's the same at rank two and then at rank three she already gets the bon the benefit of five more but it's just really rank one she's just losing five um this is, yeah, this is really just to slow down her clear speed early because she's just a little too fast. That's about the only reason this is here. And this is a very, what I would call a competitive nerf. Yeah. That's about it. So yep. uh, in some cases, if you're a Nidalee player, yeah, you're probably not happy about this. But honestly, we can kind of ignore this because you're probably not clearing as optimally as a professional player. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and take that random stab in the dark. So. Um, probably, probably pretty true. Uh, next up is Poppy. Now, Poppy is getting a nerf. Not really surprised, to be honest, but she is the strongest champion in the game. No, not the strongest, but one of the strongest top laners and really good at uh, f um, flex picking this to jungle or support if you really I want didn't, to. Or, or even top, yeah, top jungle <clears throat> support. Yeah. yeah. Um, Iron Ambassador, the range on it's going down 100. No longer resets Poppy's basic attack as well. Thank Hammer you. Shock damage is going down. Um, the base damage is being reduced by quite a bit. From Instead of 40 to 140, it's going to be 35 to 115. Um, instead of 6% of the target's maximum health, it is going up to 7% of the target's maximum health. That will be better later, but initially it is worse, for sure, early on, because of the, just the smaller actual damage numbers. But this is... I don't know. It'll make up for itself eventually, but once they, don't, once they have maximum health numbers, but early on... Well the, yeah, the champion so will have to have essentially 3,000 health yeah. in order for it to be just as good. Yeah. So later no, on against tanky t targets... It'll be better. It'll Yeah. Because later that, on it'll be better. That's 30 extra damage. Yeah, but later on it'll be better, but it'll... Like, later. Late. 
Um, and then on Heroic Charge, they're going to match that with the Iron Ambassador. Um, so it is also going to only be uh, 425. And I actually kind of like that change, personally, because... Because she could jump from clear across the map, and it's mind-boggling. Seemed like it. It did seem like that. So, uh, I mean, I, I don't mind these changes. I still think she's going to be just as impactful, honestly. I think Poppy's kit is what's really good, and using it correctly will get you what you want from it. And you're not building straight damage, so taking a little bit off of Hammer Shock is unfortunate early, but realistically, you're not there to just murder things. Um, so I'm not too worried about that personally. So I think she's going to be fine still, but these needed to happen because she's a basically a guaranteed picker ban. And that is not a terrible thing for a little bit, but if it's going to stay that way, they have to make some changes so it doesn't remain that way. Or else you have casted in effect Season 3. I think that... I think that as long as the meta stays and the the uh, Sunfire Cape, Iceborne Gauntlet, yeah, uh, meta, then Poppy will still find play. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I agree. Like I don't at think all she levels. Won't. Yeah. So. Next up is Ramus. Ramus. Um, he is going getting to finally the ribbon get ribbon treatment. Yeah, he's getting the alt cooldown treatment. Um. Previously, his ultimate was just 60 seconds. That's it. All ranks, 60 seconds. Yeehaw. Now it's actually going to start higher, and then it'll have to be leveled up to get down to 60 seconds. So it's going up to 100, and then at 80. Um, he's been in a better position this season, um, as long as you don't build him full AP. And then this is good because 60-second alt cooldown timers on pretty much any champion's kind of greedy, depending on what their alt is, obviously. Yeah. But... Um, I mean, it essentially means go somewhere, help kill someone, recall, and come back and do it again. Because it'll be back up. By the time you recall and run out of base and get to lane or get anywhere you want to go, your ult's yep. back up. Yep. Like, Ramus could nonsensively, I don't know if I said that right, um, just clear minions in lane if he was playing top or if he's in the jungle. Like, he could just use it to help clear camps. Because if he's saying, guys, right, I'm going to clear topside jungle and then I'm going to come bot for a gank, he could just use his alt topside jungle to help clear quicker and then run to bot side, clear whatever he was going to, and then run out and gank and his alt would be back up. Because 60 seconds is not that long. And with a little bit of cooldown reduction, like, you could get this dude's alt on like a 30 second cooldown almost. Yeah. So. I think uh, that it's like. For me, that when I saw this, I immediately thought of Riven just because what would happen was you would get killed by it in lane and then come back in, and by the time you got back to lane, it would be yep. up again already, and they'd just kill you again. Um, that was obviously old, that was Obviously, talent, Ramis too. is not... Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, obviously, Ramis is not Riven, yeah. like what Riven like, was, but he's still really, really good because he can do the, the build that we've talked about yeah. a few times. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah, Talon, Talon had the same thing, but that his recent nerf was the nerf of put time cool on his early cooldown for his ultimate. And I've played him recently, and we can look forward to a Talon build very soon. Um, yeah, it's funny, because I'm so used to killing someone, going back, buying, coming to lane, and like waiting two seconds and my ult's back up, and you can immediately do it again. But now you actually have to wait like 25, 30 seconds. So. Um, next up is Soraka. She's seen changes to Star Call and Astral Infusion. Instead of flat mana cost on Star Call, it will scale now, which makes sense, um, since it is about the first thing she's maxing out now. So instead of it not having any more cost on it, that was a problem. And then on Astral Infusion, it's going to have its cost increased by 10 mana on each, um, on each point you put into it. So um, just... And they need to make her starve herself of mana quicker because she's able to cast too much right now and do too much with her mana pool. So yep. yeah, costs it's, going it's, up. The sustain was just too much, even against like all in. Yeah. She was still looking. And she's still strong. These don't. So mana numbers are important to look at. And yes, they're nerfs. But when they don't touch like what the numbers are doing underneath it, in some ways it's like this is a nerf to your brain saying be more consistent or think about what you're actually doing instead of spamming you know yeah yeah you actually have to be conscious of what you're doing instead yes. of just spam yeah so yeah. this does t yes it does take power out of the champion but just you can put power back into the champion when it's mana costs if you just think about it more carefully and realize what you're doing so anytime you see any kind of changes like that um that does obviously take power like i said but you can you can get around that in some ways next up is Udir. 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 
Der. He's getting nerfed again, and I'm fine with this. I don't like Udyr in games. Not that I think he's a great champion. I know a lot of people know that I don't really care for Udyr. Um, I just get bored with how people play around Udyr. I think a lot of people just play around him terribly. That's why I don't like him. Um, but he's getting another nerf. I can kind of see it. I mean, I played him recently and just comically laughed at the kind of clear he has. You never need to go back ever for any reason. Like, it's just too good. Um, and then his early damage he brings is also pretty good. Granted, he has to run out and do it with bear stance, you know, to really close in on a fight. That's definitely the hardest part, but if anybody ever pushes, that's not that hard then. Um, so his basic health regen stats going down from 0.87 to 6, um, which will take some survivability out of him early. Not tons, though. A little bit. And then on Phoenix Stance, the damage per second is being reduced by 5 at all ranks, and the damage proc is being reduced by even more. Instead of it being 40 at rank 1, it's now 25. So it's quite a bit down. Um, and that's going to obviously scale up and still be lower at its top rank. So Phoenix Stance really taking the hit, but Phoenix Stance as is is pretty strong. I think one of the things they're focusing on is the damage Uter build is slightly too tanky and does slightly too much damage. So taking some out of his base stats will calm him down and maybe we'll see him transition back into that stun tank who knows? But yeah, I. Yeah, they're gonna take him down a notch, to say the least. They didn't. I don't think once again they. Ride always like changes items without like thinking about all of the champions. I feel like, because when they introduced the runic echoes, uh, jungle enchantment, they didn't really think. Well, Uder's not. Uder's a tank, so why would he build an AP item? And they didn't really think about the ramifications of the fact that his phoenix dance is like broken and clear. So they're basically like oh, well, this will help this particular skill, and this skill is also your best clear, like, one of the best clears in the jungle, maybe oh, yeah. outside of, like, Shyvana's AoE. Yeah. But, like, it's just so good. He's just annoying, and people were building Runic Echoes, they were building Iceborne Gauntlet, and they were being, building ZZ Rots, and it was just, like, when you spam can start, yeah. all the time, and it was disgusting. And I basically anything. started... Well, yeah, I started playing di like dynamic Q, not dynamic Q, just like the normal dynamic Q. So I could ban Uter. Like that was my one purpose. Like I didn't want to play against Uter because yeah. he he was for a short period of time he was probably the most influential champion in solo Q games. Yeah, for me. When, when you can start building quote unquote full retard, they have to come and adjust something. Because also the same thing happened with Master Yi recently when Tank Yi was a thing because he would buy two on-hit effect items. He'd do crazy uh, amounts of damage because of it, and he could just build tank because it didn't matter if he actually built damage. The on-effect and his passive attack speed with the true damage was just way too much for any one champion to handle, and they had to come in and take his AD ratio down passively on that so he didn't have as much damage on it. Yep. Um, because you could, like, just seriously, like, I'll get two items and I can build whatever the hell I want. You're, a champion should never be build two items, do whatever the hell you want. That should never be a, a reason to do a specific thing on a champion. So, um, Especially on a damage champion. Yeah, because I was seeing weird stuff with uh, Uder, like, Runic Echoes, Ginsu's, and then, like, Triforce, and then um, ZZ. And you're like... Uh, so you're kind of damaged, you're kind of bruiser, you're kind of tank, but you split push and then you hit anyone hard in the face. Like, it didn't make any sense. So, But it all worked. Yeah, yeah but it all worked. It didn't matter what you bought. It just all worked. Well, ZZ Rots was just probably one of the best items in the game at that point, and no one, like... You know, I don't say no one knew it, but, like, you know, it took a while to catch well, on before people also realized how good it was. But it got better, though, when the meta shifted back to tanky top laners because yeah. a lot of them couldn't ever kill it until they nerfed ZZ back down to five hits, kills it off. Because, yep. like, a Nautilus could stand there and hit it for 17 years and never kill it. Like, yep. it just keep pushing. Uh, finally, the last champion is going to be Zed. And somebody complained about this on the Curse channel for the one-minute patch, and I did not understand like, Zed doesn't need a nerf. And I'm like, eh, he can just alt anyone and literally just like QE and then they're dead. Like, and then pop back to a shadow and just walk away and be like, pop. Well, he still does that. Yeah, he still does that. But this will help in some ways because the cooldown on Living Shadow is being um, increased at earlier ranks, meaning it will have a longer cooldown. It'll still get down to 14 seconds, though. Um, the passive bonus attack damage on this, though, is the bigger one where his passive bonus attack damage will be... So you're not as by much. one, like one level. Yeah. 
So instead of it being 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, it's 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. So 5% less passive bonus attack damage by the time he's full build is 5% less bonus attack damage, which means it's less damage on your Q, it's less damage on your E, and on your alt and your auto attacks and really everything. So this does nerf that? him across like, the board. You but... have like, what, 400 attack damage and 300 of it? No, three, like 250 is... That's 40 attack damage. Yeah, so it's it's quite a bit. It's 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 significant in some regards, but he doesn't need that much attack damage late game anyways, because he could have 450 attack damage pretty easily, and he could just alt somebody and, like I said, QE, walk away. Like, he wouldn't need to even auto attack them if he didn't want to. Because he will shred through any ADC if they don't have a QSS, which I don't know why they wouldn't have had a QSS at that point, but still, it does happen. This just, to me, this opens up, like, ganking opportunities because his W was up so often that, like, it was really hard to gank it, leave the lane, have him get comfortable enough to start pushing forward again, and then gank it again yeah. before his W is back up, and this will hopefully kind of settle that, in, at least in the early games. Um, sure. And sure. then... And then, obviously, the, the nerf to the late game damage is always much appreciated. Very true. Very true. Um, so. I think it'll still be fine early game, though. It's just snowballing into the later game. You won't start to explode as crazily. You should scale slightly more evenly. So, um, Global Splash Unification. Um, as that's something they've been doing over the many year, it feels like um, they're going to be updating Splash Arts for... Um, global unity reasons. So everybody, so every region has the same splash. Hopefully, stuff. we get a lot of the Chinese versions because a lot of the Chinese versions are way better than our versions. Yeah, well, it says right here some of the splashes will be switching to the Chinese version and vice versa. So it's kind of cool. So I wish they would neat. tell us, like bracket we'll it, like just not, have to go look. Well, well I, I know, but like don't bracket it out by by uh, will, alphabet. Some? Bracket it out by which ones are going which direction. I, I kind of agree. Basically, if you guys want to fully read this, pause the video or check out the patch. But there's a lot of skins here and yes. different types. So check these out. Um, yeah, there's really a lot of them. So check them out if you want to see what they're going to see. But you'll probably see them in-game anyway, so you may not have to worry about that. As for items on this patch, there is an item change. It is the Ma of Mamortius. It is getting a nerf. Its magic resist is being reduced to 40 instead of 50. That's what it normally is. And the lifeline attack speed is being removed. Um, so you don't get 25% increased attack speed when you hit lifeline. Um, so this is a decent nerf, to be honest. I'm wondering if we'll see other magic resist items come into play. Dare I say, wit's end. I haven't seen that item in a long time. It'd be nice to see if it got picked up again, because I actually think it's decent, depending on your matchup, because the on a hit is not terrible. Um, it's inconsistent, though, with your stacking m magic resist, unfortunately, but it's an interesting item. I wish they would buff it just a tiny bit so we could see it and play more often. Uh, but Ma is getting a nerf, to say the least. Maybe if you're somebody who likes simplicity and you're an AD and you were building Ma, and these two stats turn you off now, maybe now is the time to start going Mercurial Scimitar. You still get the magic resist, and you get even more damage and the QSS. So might be worth it. And the lifesteal. So. Honestly, I, like most of the time when I'm playing AD, I usually buy Mercurial Scimitar over Ma if the other team has hard CC, and that, like, yeah. I don't yeah. understand why <clears throat> League doesn't like magic resist at all. Like all of the good magic resist items were removed from the game, and then everything, like every single time one kind of shows up yeah. that's not Banshee's Veil or Spirit Visage, they nerf it. I don't know. So I know I'm on the like, same page. My, I'm still waiting for my favorite item to be put back in the game. It won't ever happen, but I'm waiting for it. Force of nature. Force of nature. Remember, remember the, remember I want the old Runic Bulwark. Runic Bulwark. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that thing was also awesome. Then it got. Then it got ripped, and then it got, like, mega nerfed into what nowadays is the locket of the Iron Solari. And remember, the original original locket was, like, complete shit. Yeah. No one bought it ever. <laughs> yeah, because then when they buffed it, or they, they basically ripped Bulwark out of the game and changed it and made locket into Bulwark what it kind of was. Yeah. Like, locket was technically still fine at the time, because I think they nerfed locket since then. 
but people like were hesitant to buy Lockett because they just knew that it was synonymous with being shitty. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, League. Um, Masteries. Warlords. Warlords Bud Bus. Uh, effectiveness versus minions. 50% for melee champions, but only 25% for ranged champions. So there you go. So, ranged oh. champions, lifesteal less from minions. Um, because it was pretty damn strong. If yeah. I made a video on this. If you want to check it out, check it out. I did Warlords versus uh, Fervor. And Warlords in 1v1s couldn't really win out except for at level 1. But that was against a champion, obviously. So against champions, it's still the same. But the lifesteal you were getting in lane off of minions was godly. <laughs> so yep. good. That's... I don't know if I would take it anymore. I th- I still honestly... I know most of the pros run um, Jin with not Fervor. They run the other one. They run the Deathfire Touch. They run Deathfire Touch. But on Jin, I actually still think... Warlords is okay because you hit minions so damn hard, you do get lifesteal, like significant lifesteal coming back. Yeah. Um, and it's a good way to give yourself that extra padding in lane. It's making every one of those bullets count pretty good for that lifesteal. So in some cases, that's the only argument I really have for it right now. But on well, uh, on, you're basically on champions, you're basically yeah. arguing. I, I I can see why on Jin just because you're arguing like full game sustain over ultimate damage. Yeah. Because when you take Death Fire Touch, it's all about those last shots, you know. Yeah. So I don't know. It's it's risk. It's it's up to you. Yeah, it's I'd probably choice. still go. I'd probably go a uh, a Death Fire Touch, but it's. But I like. I but yeah. Yeah. Personal preference. So. Yeah, it's Death. not a must take either way. No. No. Death timers are being changed in the mid game. Although the mid game to League of Legends is thirty minutes to fifty five minutes, where the death timers will be slightly less punishing. That's all it says. To me, mid game is like twenty minutes to like thirty minutes, yeah, and like, then anything well, over yeah. thirty minutes is extremely fucking long. Anything longer than thirty-five minutes is like, all right, what the hell have we done wrong? Yeah. Which I don't know. Most of the time, the games are already over by thirty minutes. Thirty they, to thirty-five they can, minutes. They can be. But, it depends on team comps in some ways. No, no, like, I get but, it. But like, why would why are they like? When I get to that 30, like, in between, if a game lasts anywhere from 30 to 55 minutes, I'm ready for the game to be over. Yeah. Like, or what like did we do wrong? Way. Yeah. What did we do wrong, or what did they do wrong, and how have they not won yet? Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. This is... Yeah. It's interesting. I just don't know what they're trying to, like, because... Are they trying to make the... Beginning the- of, like, at the beginning of the season, it was all about making the game shorter, and now they're, like, slowly starting to creep the games back out. It's just like, what the hell? You know, I think there's a way to speed that up, honestly, in a lot of builds, especially with tanks coming back in the meta. Yeah, I want to start trying some ADC builds where I build um, um, Lord Dominic's second item. It's so friggin' strong. Yeah, it tears tanks open. It's unbelievable how good that item is now, because back in the day we only had Wit's End to try to rip through people. Now Wit's End is just part Wait, of an item last that now. Yeah, sorry, Last Whisper. Yeah. Now, Last Whisper is just part of an item that then opens up even more of ripping a hole through people. Yeah. Dude, I was full tank Zack the other day in a game with, like, 300 armor. And miss I got caught in a full Misfortune ultimate, and she had one. The whole thing damn near killed me because it does so much more damage through you because I have more life than her. And so she gets the extra bonuses for being an asshole. And she just destroyed me. Like, absolutely. She did, like, it said it did, like, 3,800 damage. And I was like, huh? <laughs> like, back in the day, you could shrug that off as a tank. But now that hurts a lot. Yeah. Um, wards. If you see an enemy champion without the assistance of a ward or visual effects, they can always see you and vice versa. Great smoke stream. Fix the bug where killing blue trink would reveal the area around you for a short period of time. And fix the bug we're attacking. An enemy champion near a wall could give them vision over the wall. So some tweaks to vision to help there. To Don't be really... more consistent. Yep. Um, this next one's pretty helpful or pretty exciting for most people. Rotating game mode queue will become available starting this Friday. 
Um, rotations will be available starting Friday afternoon around 4 p.m. server time. Closes up shop very early on the Monday mornings. The rotating game mode queue offers at least one game mode per weekend over several weeks. Okay. They'll publish a schedule of the ones coming out. Champion Mastery is available in all rotating game queue modes. You also earn points for champions you play, as well as enabling Hextech crafting drops for S scores um, and a chance to drop keys, fragments. So as basically, well. it's like it's almost like Tavern Brawl for Hearthstone, except there's the game modes that they've already came out with. Like it's it'll be just a different yeah. game mode, like one for all, Earth, and yeah. all that shit. Yeah. Literally, you've uh, summed it up with all that shit. I like it. Thank you. I um, wish. That's actually an okay idea, I guess. What is? The next part? They could honestly put it on like a shorter rotation. Like just have it like a Wednesday or like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday thing. And then like have it go away. Like a whole week. Because most people play it for the first, you know, two days. Yeah, like any given one. Yeah, so sure. I don't know. That's just my yeah. two cents. But I like it. It's a good yeah. idea. Um, next up on the patch is the pre-made limiter. So Thank God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some major issues with this. So Master, Challenger, Diamond players can now only queue with specifics within their division, plus or minus, essentially, two divisions instead of a whole bracket. Because, like, a, a Challenger could have queued with a Diamond, or, yeah, with a Diamond 5. I'm going to be honest. There's quite a big difference between a Diamond 5 player and a Challenger player. Oh, shit. The difference yeah. between Diamond, or, like, Bronze 5 and Diamond 1 is the same difference as it is from Diamond 1 to Challenger. Yeah. What they no, say. yeah. The gaps get huge once you yeah. get to D2, in my opinion. Yep. Huge. So, limiting this is great. I'm assuming, though, reading the patch notes to most people right now, this is affecting one or two people. <laughs> percentage base wise it's, it's affecting even less. Uh Plats can obviously still queue with plats. Um, Diamond fives can only queue as low down as people who are plat two. Essentially, is the big thing. Um, gold, silver, bronze not affected. Um, so yeah. Hextech crafting and loot upgrades. Key fragments now have a chance of dropping after winning ARAM or Twisted Tree Line games, as well as Summoner Rift key frags. Really drop the more key frags you can earn. Fury will drop. Good, because I have like fifteen boxes. I have like four boxes i, I have, have like five boxes yeah i don't have here. any key I have fragments. shitloads of boxes yeah so um four highest tiers of loot are ultimate which is orange mythic which is purple legendary which is red and epic which is teal. so how how hard are they like ripping off hearthstone right now <laughs> pretty hard uh, mythic loot currently includes hextech annie new animations have been added throughout hextech crafting Lots of generic bug f fixes. Pause the video or read these closely if you'd like to, because because they're kind of stupid. Yeah. And then we have upcoming skins, which is of course Mecha Zero Scion, which looks interesting. Is the word I'll use? Yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, I actually like it in game. In game, it looks really good. I haven't seen it in game actually yet. Um, I don't really care for the splash. We have Program Lissandra, which I actually like the splash a lot personally i, think it looks I like neat. how she's got soraka in her little thing right there i don't know if you can see that oh yeah she does on the screen yeah yeah i do like that i do like that skin that looks neat i might have to get that one honestly and then we have program really soraka which honestly is not doing anything for me to be honest i didn't notice that there's a whole bunch of bliss cranks in the background i still think the best i still think the best skin for uh for soraka is soul reaver the best skin for Soraka Soul Reaver. is or the, Banana Slinger. No, the green one. Oh, the uh, Dryad. Dread, yeah, Dryad. No, it's yes. me. Yes. Somebody actually gifted me Soul or uh, Soul Reaver Soraka, and they're like, oh, like after a match on a stream once, and I can't remember who it was now, but they were like, oh, da damn, I'm sorry. And I'm like, no, I actually really wanted this skin, and I missed it because it was limited, and you can't buy it now. This is like my favorite one. They're like, oh, is it? And I was like, yes. This is I awesome. still want them to come out with Star Spangled Soraka. That'd be interesting. So, but she already has too many skins. Like she's got a bunch. Uh, she's got like a gajillion. It seems like nowadays. Yep. Um, still waiting for another Lissandra skin. I saw it Riot many years ago, season three, when I was there. There was a really cool concept on the wall, and I was like, that's clever. 
I can't wait till that's a skin. Still hasn't come out, so we'll see if it ever happens. Um, I can't also say because I was NDA'd at the time, and I'm a um, what's the, a respectable adult. Believable, or you're a you're a honorable. I have honor, so I won't I won't say what it is because I'm under NDA. Uh, also, at that time in season three, that's when I saw Dunk Master Darius before probably you know anybody else besides people who were at, worked at Riot. So back in the day, yo, back in the day. I can talk about that one because that one's out. Okay, don't Can't be upset. Talk about that one. So. Um, but that is the patch notes. Those are patch notes for uh, six point seven. Honestly, a lot of nerfs and tweaking in this patch. Um, mostly taking some power to some champions that have been strong for a little while now. Kind of the over overarching um, storyline, you could say. But those are uh, pretty much the changes. If you have any thoughts on said changes, leave us a comment down below about those and if you could also leave us a like that would make us feel very good inside because they're free for you and it's awesome that's honestly that's that's what it is so since since we didn't do this live i'll probably peruse the comments so if you have a question just throw it down there and true. I'll... same here I, i'll try to always look them over as well so. so um but yeah that is us for now we wish you the best of luck and we'll see you guys later Later. Bye.